We're running a test for setting posts on a species of wood that you're not supposed to use in order to see which of these treatments will make the wood last longer underground. It'll all make sense in a little bit. Trust we're going to run two tests and a control plus a fail. And at some point during the video, we're going to show you which species you should use. Then why it's better than the cedar that you're thinking we're going to suggest. Let's go. Now I do have customers that call me all the time for cedar posts, but there's a problem. Western red cedar doesn't grow in the Midwest. It grows on the West Coast. Now I had a customer call me about some kind of gateway post he wanted to do. So since we don't have cedar, and some of the other options may not be real good for the environment, we've got a few solutions that we want to test. But the question is, what are those solutions? We're gonna use a type of lumber that most people would never use, pine. And we're gonna test it out and see how it does. We wanna make sure that you know that pine is not the right type of lumber you should be using for this. And we're gonna show you the right type of lumber later on. We're gonna be using pine because it's considered to be one of the species that will rot the fastest. We're gonna use one post as a control and fully expect it to rot the fastest over all of our tests. Then we're gonna try some post traps that we found on the internet that are supposed to help. We'll find out. And then we're gonna test the Yakasugi method. Kyle just wants to go to the fire. Maybe, maybe he's right, <laughs> he's probably right. And then after Kyle gets done playing with fire, we're gonna try a mystery test. But first, before we can do any testing, we need to order the wraps and cut the beans. Some post saver options here. Looks like uh, 53 bucks. It is prime day and would you look at that? There is nothing. I think we'll go with the pack of five or just a couple to test it out. All right, let's take a look. He makes so much money, it's not even a problem. <laughs> we'll include the price right here. And hopefully I can try to resell the rest of these in the shop here and get some of my money back. The chain. We'll see how these work first before I start trying to sell them. We just got done cutting those six by sixes for the experiment. And I gotta tell you, man, it is hot out here today. Cutting those six by sixes went pretty smooth, which is pretty rare for us because we usually end up breaking something, which is part of running a sawmill. But little did we know, this was the calm before the storm. The worst of our problems was yet to come. Now that we have our posts and the products that we want to test, it's time to reveal our mystery test. It's called Eco Wood Treatment. Apparently it's an all natural product that not only preserves the wood, but it also stains the wood to any color you want. It's important to note that we're not sponsored by any product in this video. They're not paying us to do this, and they don't even know that we're making this video in the first place. Eco wood treatment here, $48.95 for a two pack of these. We'll include a link in the description if you wanted to check this out and try it out. Each one of these packets is a gallon's worth of non-toxic stain. I think I got the, the silvery patina, was it? Yep, silvery patina color. They also have a red, black, brown, and gray. Apparently there is no maintenance. The wood stain will not wear off, will not fade, will not peel. Eco wood treatment migrates and covers exposed wood and cracking as it occurs. So that's pretty cool. Blah, blah, blah. Made of 100% organic compound. So we should find out sooner than later how well this works. Of course, we got a problem. Looking at the uh, fine print here for this eco wood treatment says post, etc. installed in the ground must soak for at least three days in triple strength solution. So we were trying to film this today and we need to get this filmed, but I gotta let this thing soak to do an experiment right because we want to do a proper experiment. It's like we're in trouble now. I gotta figure out how to mix this solution up and figure out how to get it onto the post because it says here must soak for three days in triple strength solution. Triple strength, not just single or double, triple. 
So now I gotta figure out how to get a six by six post soaking in what is essentially less than one, because this is one gallon's worth and I only have two, which is two gallons worth. In a triple strength solution, I would need three packages for a gallon. Doing the math there, two thirds of a gallon. There he goes. <laughs> math. Uh, math's not my strong suit, ladies and gentlemen. So two of those packages and two thirds of a gallon of water to soak up halfway to the, through the post. This is gonna be tricky. I may, I may actually have to order more. So we'll figure that out. And then you come blasting in with face of some of a man who's got some problems. Yeah. What do we got going Reset on? Reset line, I fixed the hydraulic motor was leaking, got it all back together. And now one of the cylinders that puts tension on the blades is leaking like a faucet. So now that puts another damper in the thing because he needs to fix that resaw line to keep production going before we can even film the video in the first place. We'll figure it out. We always do. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to mix up these two packs of this eco wood treatment. The recipe calls for one pack per gallon if you're just going to paint it on fence posts or something like that. But if it's going to have ground contact, it requires the three times concentration. I'm going to mix it up here and uh, stick around. Also hit that like button for me, brother. Bah! All right, we're going to take a uh, pack, pour it in this jug. I'm going to fill it up two thirds of the way. It's green. It's crystally. It reminds me of Breaking Bad. All right. That's about it right there, huh? That'll work. Oh. All right, we got our solution here. We're going to get our things prepped and ready to go and set it for the weekend. All right, first order of business is to take one of those bags and wrap it in the post. And we're gonna use this tube after it's wrapped, set it in here. Then we're gonna fill the, sp the spaces on the outside of the bag with sand that we got here. And then uh, hopefully that works. Kendall th seems to think that'll work. I think we should use sawdust. But Kendall seems to think this will work just fine. I hope so. It's important to note that we should probably round out the corners so that they don't rip the bag. And then you just slide the tube on after you get the bag on. The tube's a little bit longer than the bag. Quick Crete thing is too long. We need to cut it at 41 inches. Of course it's too long. I suppose I could have filmed that. It was a pain in the butt. I cut it down to around three feet. That way it could fit up to the bag and the bag can overlap. There we go. Now we're rocking and rolling. Start filling her up. Uh-oh. Uh, another problem. It's gonna wanna... It's gonna wanna fall over. All right, we're gonna figure out a solution for that. I inquired about help so that we can get this stable on there. Well, now he comes out to supervise and help. He, he just came inside. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's not gonna fall over. I said, I know he's helping me. And I never said nobody's helping me. <laughs> never said that. That'll work. That'll hold a stable. Make sure you get finer sand so that it goes between the walls here better. This looks like antifreeze. This looks like old used antifreeze towels. <laughs> it's not, it's eco wood. <laughs> Looks like apple cider to me. <laughs> and I hope there's no hole in the bag too. It's going right down. Yeah, we're out of solution, aren't we? It'd be nice if it filled to the top. Well, it's the best we can do. I'm kind of wishing I'd have bought more, but whatever. We're gonna just do what we can. Now all that's left to do is let the post set over the weekend, and when we get back, we can get the other tests ready and set them in the ground, which is easier said than done. All right, we got a film day today here. We're uh, the auger ready to film. Now we're supposed to drill holes, but get steers down. So we don't even know if we're gonna be able to drill holes today. This is gonna be great. The auger we're gonna use, we're gonna get it set up. Hopefully these holes drilled. But first, we gotta prep the beans. We ran into problems with the skid steer here. So Kendall and I separate. He goes to fix the machine and I go and get those six by sixes ready. Now I gotta figure out how to elevate it to burn it. I don't know if this will work, huh? Maybe this? Maybe? Find out. Would you look at that? Something actually worked out for one. We're gonna test the Yakisugi method on the post and see how well they do on ground contact. And then we're also gonna test these post saver post wraps. And contrary to what I've been taught as a child, I think I'm gonna actually read the directions this time so I can get it right the first time. As you can see, coming up later, we did a test that I didn't really read the... Well, no, actually I did read this. I did read the instructions for that one. That one, that test just sucked no matter what. But before we get to using this for prepping beans, I'm gonna burn the heck out of this bean. And I think it's important to note that you should have some water ready in case any fires get out of hand. I'll also be bringing in a fire extinguisher just in case things get a little too out of hand for my liking. Okay, let's get this done before it gets too hot out. It's a 
important to note that in our last video, the best wood for outdoor furniture, we did the Yakisugi method on one of the boards over there. And I had a comment from a guy, I can't remember the name, but it's a shout out to you who said that we should burn it till it looks like it's destroyed. So hopefully we don't go overboard, but we're gonna try that out. I ran out of fluid. No! Ugh. All right, plan B. Should have freaking filled that up today. Now this is where I wish I had a piece of lighter. Come on, baby. What is going on? There we go! It's important to note that this is the second time I've ever tried this method. So, take it easy on me in the comments, please. So that looks pretty good for that side. The area that's closest to the ground level is the most important spot. That's the spot that we need to make sure that gets covered. All right, let's see if we can get this bad boy started again. Oh yeah, and by the way, not related to Maddie Matheson. And there goes all of my leg hairs again. I'm realizing I probably don't need to burn all the way down here, but I'm doing it just in case. Oh, I feel like we're running out. Oh, we're gonna run out of fuel. I think this is why the traditional Yakasugi method is so much better, because you're wasting so much fuel just trying to get the surface burned. Oh, I think I need to get this backside quickly. Oh, I need to fill this up, or maybe not. Ah, let's just finish this off. I think that's right about enough, ladies and gentlemen. That'll do, pig. That'll do. Always make sure you douse it when you're done burning to put out any embers. I'm not a yakisugi expert, so I hope that's correct. There is no way on planet Earth would I ever attest to being an expert at really anything. I'm learning right along you guys too. In this segment, we're gonna test these post straps out. I have a feeling that this is gonna be the best solution because as you can see here in this diagram, you really only need to cover the area six inches above and about two feet below ground level. I'm gonna put it up about halfway because that's about as far deep as we need to bury these things. The freeze tends to push all beams and posts and anything, tends to push them up further out of the ground. So you need to bury your beams deeper here in Minnesota. All right, halfway mark, bada bing, bada boom. Bada bing, I'm so glad I didn't have to shimmy it underneath. That would have been a nightmare. Now for the fun part, folks. We get to play with fire again. Be safe. Let's see if I can get this started on the first flicker. That seems about right. Ah, please work. This is my first time doing this, so I hope I'm doing this right. There we go. Sorta? Yeah, atta boy, that works. Yep, I got tar all over my hand. This'll do, pig, this'll do. I'm gonna let that sit there and cool down. I hope I didn't heat it up too much. I don't think I did, but this part started worrying me, but I think we'll be all right. All right, Kai, I feel like we should have dug the holes first, set the post down in so we know the depth that we need, and then just burn, or what's your Yakisuke method? Yakisuke yep. method it? In the area where it's gonna be by the ground, because what if we set the post to the ground and it goes to here and that's sitting up out, out of the ground? Then you got to dig further then. What if I can't? Then we're in trouble. Pretty uh, heat that up and shrink it on. Oh yeah, it's all on there up to four feet. Four feet from this end to here. Okay, I'm just saying I think it would have been smart. But you know what? What do I know? Well, I thought of that too. Then you're like, I just want a video right now. People are going to wonder what happened to my fence. Am I recycling wood from burned down barn or what? <laughs> one, my one worry here is this crack in here, like how is that gonna, like up further towards the center here, how is this crack gonna uh, fare against the ground level rot? Like, I mean, that Yakasugi method, I mean, how, what if what if moisture gets in there and starts rotting it from the inside like that? So that'll be <clears throat> a little bit of a indicator how well this works uh, for underground ground contact stuff. Fair so enough. It'll be interesting to see. I'm gonna go get the skid loader and we'll get the post hole digger. After getting our first two beams ready, we go back and check on our eco wood solution to see how that turns out 
So I've been letting this soak over the weekend. It's been about three days now. We're gonna take this out, put it in that bucket, cut a hole in the bottom and drain out the fluid so maybe we can save the fluid for later. That is if the fluids haven't leaked out the bottom already. I wasn't smart enough to put it in the bucket before the weekend. I know it's gonna be a nightmare to pull this out because we had jam-packed a bunch of sand in here along with big rocks. It's all we had. Should have used sawdust. I should have cut the bottom first. We saved a little bit and the bag held. Look at that. Holy moly, that was kind of a nightmare. With that being said, my customers are here. They're probably inside. But as you can see, there is some left in here. There's a little bit left. In a little bit here, I will, t I will take off the wrap and the cylinder and then show you what the results are of the soaking over three days. What we're doing now is me basically tricking Kendall and Tony over here and taking off this tube so we can reveal the results. Well, so we got the bottom eight inches treated. Yeah. <laughs> you need to come up with a new plan, Kyle. Yeah. We got up eight inches though, you know? It's Ten inches? Yeah, that's not the part you need treated. Oh, the part you need is going to be the part that's... Right there, yeah. ...shaking out of the ground. Yep. However, the good news is... There is no good news, really. <laughs> <laughs> I think this is pretty much a fail. We need to start over. How much did you spend on that? It was 60 bucks or 50 bucks. It would work if you uh, could get 20 to 50 gallons worth of 3X concentration. Yeah, you could just drop it in a 50 gallon yeah. drum. Yeah, it'd be awesome. How much money is that gonna cost? It'd be like 25 times 50. It's not even a viable <laughs> option. I'm already determining this as a fail because there's no way anybody in the world would want to spend that much money. No wonder why there was only one review. <laughs> <laughs> so we ditched the eco wood idea and decided to move on with the tests that we do have. But we immediately ran into problems with the auger. No auger, no test. First, we got to put this thing together. Some assembly required. Beautiful. Okay, so Kyle, I'm going to lift it up. And then you're gonna set that shaft set right down in there. You gotta okay. match up the holes. And we're good to go, okay? Awesome. All right. It's like dented in there or something. Get in there. Put some stone force on it. So they have a oh, hold on here. Like, no, this right here is. Yeah, there's a little, there's a little spot. It's like dented in right there. Malfunction. I don't know how. I mean, it's such thick metal. I can't believe that thing could get dented. That is not a dent. It looks like it's a defect. Maybe, I don't know. So now we got to grind it out so we can fit the auger into the shaft and do it all before the end of the day today. Otherwise, we're going to have to wait till next week to continue filming this. And then it'll be late putting this video out, and we don't want that. All right. I'm going to try and get this thing ground out here a little bit. Sorta. Way better than it was. So I'll pick it up. Maybe we can get it a little more straight down, push down on it, and get that pin in there. All, all right. right. Don't forget the pin. Awesome. All right. There you go. In Minnesota, you want to check with Gopher One before you dig holes to make sure you're not getting any power lines or fiber optic cables. Where we're at here, um, I've had checked in the past and it is safe to dig. So. Woo. Which one do you want to do first here? Well, that's the nicest looking one with the post wrap, so I want to do that one first. Are you biased against the non-nicest looking one? Only a little. You sure this is four feet? Yep. These post saver post wraps are like $10, $15 on Amazon and they guarantee these for like 20 or 30 years. And I'll drop a link in the description so that you guys can pick these up if you guys are interested in them. All right, did you get the hole deep enough, Kyle, this time? Before you set it in there, we can measure it, right? I suppose, let's see if Kyle screwed this up or not. Yep, I'm gonna make sure, I'm gonna make sure. Where are we at? Three feet, six inches. Really, that's it? Yeah. Probably need a little more. A little more. All right, here we go, Kyle. Oh yeah, then, Okay, just like that. Tamp that down a little bit. 
All right, our line's a little bit above the earth, the earth. I hope it doesn't matter. Pretty close to even on this side, though. We're good. Should be all right. As long as we keep saying it's gonna be all right, it's gonna be all right. Well, here, we'll just do this. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and then you don't even need to show that we won't, nobody will see the backside. So there you go. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Perfect. Now it's up to the line there. Problem solved. Can we do the next one? Next one, yep. I'm guessing three foot 11 inches. How deep we got, Kyle? Just a little bit more. About this much. Ah, three foot nine. Nice try. Oh yeah. It's better that we did the post saver one first. That one has to be more precise. We got that out of the way. At your level? Nice on that side. Okay, hold it right there. Oh, you're pushing it now. Oh, come on. Yep, what? now it's all misaligned. It's all kind of screwed up now. Good post holder wouldn't, wouldn't have that problem, Kyle. It's a good thing that's not my profession, right? All right, we'll check it here and see where we're at. This is in a little bit of an attestment to our humanity where we were gonna run a fence, but as you can see here, it's square here, but moving along, yeah, it's not. No, we run a fence back that way though. Yeah, we run a fence that way, I guess. We'll see what happens. Cut the corner off maybe. Yeah, we'll do something. We'll figure it out. Like we were saying earlier, all you gotta do is just keep saying, we'll figure it out, and then we just get it figured out somehow. That's kind of an attestment to being a Christian like us. God tends to take all the negative stuff and he turns it into good for us. And there you go. So it'll be interesting to see this Yakasugi method and how this fares up compared to the other posts. And type in the comments which one of these posts you think will last the longest. Now we're drilling for the control. See how deep we are? Oh. <laughs> Never see me again. That's close enough. We're gonna come back to these posts one year from now and find out which one of these tests did the best. So how long do you think these posts are gonna last? Which, which one do you think is gonna last the longest, boss? That one right over there. <laughs> I bet you're wondering what Kendall's pointing at. It's the type of wood that we said that we were gonna recommend to you in the beginning of the video, and it's gonna surprise you. Even with cool stuff like the Yakasugi method and the post straps, you're still gonna need the right type of wood. In this video right here, we show you the best wood for outdoor projects and why it's not what you think it is. I'll see you there, brother. Contrary to what you guys think, I actually kind of researched these videos. <laughs> it's a me, a Mario. You wanna try it first? Nope. You're hired for that without without pay though. <laughs> <laughs>